All right. Um, welcome to this session today. We'll talk about the next Drupal Admin UI improvements. So another session about the Admin UI, right? Um, I think Christina and I both talked a lot in recent years about the Admin UI, and we will still try to continue doing so. Um, so my name is Sasha Eckenberger. Um, I'm a senior product designer at GitLab. Um, I'm one of the design maintainers of Claro and the Drupal design system, and I'm also the creator of the Chin Admin theme, which you might know. Hi, I'm Cristina Tomillas. I work at Lulabot as a senior front-end developer, and I'm also a core UX uh, maintainer and also, this is long, a uh, provisional core uh, front-end uh, framework manager. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, why are we here? Basically, um, we want to empower site builders um, to give the best solution. We can't control what people is going to build, but we can help people build the best one and provide them with the best tools or the best first starting point. Um, all this started a while ago. Uh, we started uh, with uh, research like a lot of time ago, months ago. And um, this is not uh, just about the navigation, uh, which is, you probably already heard about that. This is about the whole, making the whole UI better. So um, we first needed to identify uh, who were we uh, working uh, for or which uh, people was out there. We came up with three main personas, uh, the site administrator, the site builder, and the content editor, and content editor, content manager, colleague, whatever, content uh, user, content related user. Um, each of them have completely different tasks. So we need to define what we need to solve and for whom. Uh, in Drupal core, we have the content editor. Uh, there is the proposal to also have the content manager. Uh, this helps us provide specific solutions that are different from the site builders that we, we already have uh, the admin uh, role by default, by default, but we actually have the option to have other things that are in the standard profile of, um, targeted to different users, different personas, sorry. So um, we came up uh, with a map for each of these personas. Um, we, this is uh, quite a standard on the UX research wall. Um, we came up with behaviors, frustrations, and motivations for each of these three main uh, uh, personas. So this is the, I'm not going to read all that, uh, but this is the proof that we work on this. Uh, this is the, uh, we call it administrator because uh, we, this shouldn't happen, with, but it's kind of tied to Drupal core roles somehow. So we had the admin role. Then uh, we don't have the site builder role, but we also work as uh, the site builder because actually it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a site builder role because you are actually building the site. And it's, sometimes you either have the site builder and admin uh, hat or um, it's not um, needed, but the tasks and the um, goals for the site builder are usually completely different to the ones for the site administrator, and that's why we wanted to keep them separated. And obviously the content editor, we called him or uh, this person a uh, content editor, but it also can be content manager, content author. So as you can see, we can, they are actually completely different roles in a lot of sites, but we needed to have like a content general um, user. Something else that we did were uh, user journeys. Uh, basically, is where you start and what's your goal. Uh, the fun part here is that every time that you want to start in Drupal, you end up in the slash uh, user. You've been in Drupal for five minutes. So yeah, that's where dashboard comes. But anyway, uh, this is uh, basically we came up uh, with uh, different workflows and where each where each of them started. Um, like if you want to create a content type, where do you start? If you want to theme something, um, 
probably how many themers in the room? Okay. How is the experience of uh, going to create a new view mode and go to the, um, the node edit form and yeah. Okay, so these kind of things. We didn't just focus on the, on the content authors or, or whatever. We kind of did that for all the, all the users. We did other research. We did uh, card sorting. Not sure if you, any of you participated. Um, um, this card sorting, the goal for this was trying to come up with a uh, better information architecture to see how people grouped uh, things from the current administration uh, menu. And we also did uh, several user uh, tests um, uh, with the navigation, but also for project browser. And uh, we collaborated with the uh, uh, University of Minnesota, and we learned a lot. Um, so I'm going to start talking about the navigation modernization because it's the thing that um, we've been working more uh, lately and I'm uh, personally uh, more involved. So some of the previous work that happened here and is related to this is uh, all the work related to the information architecture. Everybody knows what's information architecture? Uh, somebody doesn't know it? Okay, so well, basically, it's trying to organize like the, the menu uh, items uh, in a way that they make sense uh, for the users. Where there is also another proposal for a new menu that it's create. Uh, it's called content creation menu. It's not for creating content, but it's basically related to content. You will see now. Uh, before that, there was a lot of research also done for the admin UI and JavaScript modernization initiative. Another long uh, sentence. Uh, also, the Claro and the new layout uh, inside the admin and whatever modernization initiative, and also a lot of stuff happened in the Gene admin theme that he had, uh, Sasha has been implementing a lot of stuff and testing a lot of stuff already there. Why do we want to make all these changes? Um, for our starting point, uh, we don't want the same menu uh, for content users and for site. Um, administrators or um, site builders, for example. It doesn't make sense. They don't want the first, uh, the, the main important uh, places that they're going to click are not the same. Um, we don't have a second uh, level navigation in our horizontal mode for the navigation in core. Uh, I've, seen, I've said that several times, but more than 70% of the sites install um, admin toolbar, and if you don't install that, why? Um, basically, um, the core uh, toolbar, uh, if you put that on the left, um, it has, you can go to the lower levels, but there is an issue to solve that, but um, we're trying to uh, solve that because we also have too much space when it's on a vertical mode, maybe on, on, the, on the left. It's not, the designs are not up to date. We have accessibility problems and for these uh, front-end developers still uses jQuery. So this is, this has years, like really a lot of years, uh, this uh, mock-up that we came up like a long time ago. But that, that, this is what we envision, like probably Amsterdam? 2019, way before that, yeah. So we kind of try to have this left stuff uh, with all the things in there and the things that we were thinking that would make sense at that time. So um, all the work that we are doing has a lot of parts. Uh, all the research that I've been uh, telling, it just is a starting point. The information architecture, it's a work in progress. Also the designs are actually we're trying to um, work on the administration navigation and at the same time test everything and iterate on top of that, meaning that we're going to need designs and user tests and front-end development all the time. And also the back-end, uh, it's actually something that just started right now, uh, defining what the features that need to be built and everything that we're going to iterate on top of tests all the time, and that's a goal. So in the information architecture perspective, um, we have this uh, um, issue from 2016, 
It's been there for a long time, and Ifrik, I think you're here. Hi. She opened this issue. She's been. I never thought it would actually move anywhere. So I'm really glad that you came. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the card shot thing that I was telling you about, the goal was actually uh, to try to. Um, put together cards, uh, basically that each card had a name of a link on the menu, and we asked for people to actually put the cards together and give a name to the cards. And this is basically, um, if you see at the top, the, those are the cards that were grouped together. So in here we kind of found several groups that were working together, and groups uh, things that make sense for people. It was really interesting, but the problem that we had here is that this survey was open for both for content editors and uh, experienced users, and a lot of the content editors didn't even understand what the naming or what of the links in there. There was a buff this week uh, about Drupalisms, because there's a lot of people that is starting in Drupal and have no idea what some of the names like view modes, we were saying before, we have form, form modes, view modes, display modes, um, you, you, you get it. So um, basically, uh, there is not the title here, perfect. Uh, <laughs> this is the, the survey, uh, this is the, the, the results of the, of the survey. Um, uh, basically, uh, we try to map the customizations uh, for the toolbar and the customizations for the uh, administration menu itself. And now the new content creation menu that I was talking about, um, we're basically trying, uh, so as you all might know, um, as a content user, when you log into Drupal, you see all these um, it is solved now. You don't see any more the, uh, the top links if you don't have access to one of the child issues uh, items. Uh, but still, it doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of users to have like appearance in there or to see like they actually. If you go with Drupal Core, you only have the content and you have to click the content. And what else do you have? You maybe have a structure and you have to navigate to at the menu. Like it's menu, navigate and to the menu and add the menu. It doesn't make a lot of sense for content users. So we decided that we would try to take the few links that make sense for the content editor and create this new menu. So um, basically, uh, a lot of people might be interested, for example, on creating, uh, creating new users and have a list of users or maybe a few parts of the configuration, a few parts of the structure, and with that, create a new menu. And uh, the idea was basically uh, have this uh, manage content and also this uh, link to create content. And this is something that we've been implementing on the, on the new toolbar or the new navigation that we're working. So the designs, um, this is the initial designs that we uh, worked on. We, it's the left sidebar. We researched a lot on why we needed to have that on the left. Uh, it's a change, believe me. It, it's really strange at the beginning when you're navigating with this new thing on the left that is white. You're missing the black thing on top. It's like I'm logged in, I'm not logged in. That's why I would love to have a lot of feedback from you because it's um, really important to be sure that all the community it's, uh, gets on board with that. One of the things that we tried is to change bookmarks uh, instead of shortcuts. And this is basically an administration menu. And the collapse on the bottom, separating the help and the user menu at the bottom. This is the content menu. Uh, we created this uh, top create uh, fast way to, for users to create stuff. And then uh, link into uh, blogs, files, content. Uh, whatever. And uh, since we have all these, why not open it to custom menus also to leave, to make a, an easy way for people to customize whatever is on the, on the left sidebar, how many distributions don't have their own menus. So it should be easy for people to actually add menus in here. So those are the initial designs that we started from. We've done like a lot of iterations on top of that, uh, plus user tests and whatever. And um, this is something that is closer to what we have right now. Um, you will see that we don't only have this left navigation, we also have the top bar in there. And the reason is because we found out that we were missing. We started to look for uh, integrations with existing toolbar. 
And we were seeing that a lot of stuff, it just doesn't work on the left. It, do, it doesn't work. You might want to have like environment indicator. You might want to have the collapse button. People didn't find the collapse button at the bottom. So uh, we are still working on that. So this is the thing. This is work in progress. This is not final. But we are thinking in a way that we can actually um, move into having this contextual top thing that it might change from the front end to the back end. And as you can see here, this is a node edit form and you don't have the local uh, tasks. Um, we are thinking of moving them at the top. Um, this is just an initial design. This is not the final for sure, but you don't see the sidebar. This is something that Jean also um, uh, has been working on. This is actually a suggestion coming from Jean. He, they have been testing that for a long time. This is just an initial design, but this is the idea is to have this uh, top bar on there. And Basically, this is the idea. So uh, what we've been doing so far is also working on the back end. We created this prototype. You, you start, we started uh, testing this prototype. Uh, they were hard-coded links in Twig, and now we actually have to make those uh, links real menus or real things that people can actually work with that. So. Um, we are actually answering this question, so if you have thoughts, uh, come to the above later today, or um, uh, please uh, jump into the admin UI uh, channel because we want feedback from everybody. We want to ask or uh, um, answer, for example, are the menus placed as blocks? Uh, will people be able to rearrange things? Uh, how do we manage these blocks? Uh, do, should we like uh, open the door to put anything in there? Uh, this is Drupal, people will do whatever they want. So let's be realistic. Who has permissions to uh, put stuff in there? Do we want to limit uh, what can be placed uh, through an API on in some way or just open it as blocks? Um, from the existing things that we have in code right now, uh, should we remove on the admin menu itself, should we remove the content top item if we actually end up having this content creation menu? Or if people don't enable the content creation menu, should we just keep the content that is as it is right now? Should we rename the shortcuts to bookmarks because it's actually been proven on the on the user test that it's better for a lot of users because it opened another door uh, because uh, bookmarks uh, it's more like user focused than um, shortcuts and not so. We have a lot of stuff like, for example, what do we do with the help? And the content creation mo module, for example, is it actually going to be provided by the toolbar? Is it something completely independent? How do items go under the create? Which items go in there? All the content types, how many people has more than 20 content types? Then add to their yeah, taxonomies, uh, blogs, users, media, entities. So how do we manage the amount of things? Because the goal is that it's a short or a quick way to get to create content. So we need to discuss how to manage that, who, ha who can do something in there. Um, for example, um, should the submenus, should we have submenus in this create uh, thing over there? So all these questions. We actually did a lot of, uh, use, well, we've actually done usability tests, several rounds of usability tests. Um, the first round was in uh, this August. Uh, from here, uh, one of the most controversial things that we discovered, and we tested that on the second round, was that um, we were using split buttons to keep the uh, main link and then and a split button to actually open the submenu. And P um, users were super confused with that. They kept clicking on the link to actually open the submenu. They weren't expecting on the left sidebar to actually have like a, a split button to click on the on the on the carrot or the arrow itself. So we, um, among other things, uh, this is one of the most important things that we we had to change. In this second round, we actually test this change, and all the users were really happy with that. Um, we want another feedback that we uh, gather from from there is that we didn't have enough distinction from the left sidebar from the rest of the the things because we were testing with Olivero and everything is super white and there wasn't enough distinction. 
So those are the things that we are uh, working on with uh, redesign, and Sacha is going to talk a, lot, a little bit more about that. And here we are going to, to do a lot of user tests. If you're willing to come to the contribution room, we will love it because we just started uh, testing the mobile uh, that we implemented and we want to see what people think about that. And your turn. All right, thank you, Christina. Um, so, I want to quickly talk about some of the things uh, which, you know, if you're very familiar with Chin, uh, a lot of the stuff you already saw in the mockups is, is, you know, might be familiar to you as a user of the Chin admin theme, right? So, speaking of the new navigation, um, we actually had, um, you know, like the RC7 release last week, uh, and it actually introduced like this new, you now have a fourth option, uh, you know. Um, so you have a new option, you can enable that if you upgrade to RC7 in Jin, and then you can test out the new navigation, um, the new toolbar we're working on. Um, it looks like this, um, so we have like the left uh, side navigation, like we had as a default for a long time in Jin, but this time like, you know, like with the restructured menus with like this fly out navigation, so it's way easier, more compact, uh, you can easily navigate through things, and of course, um, in the nature of Chin, we already implemented the new navigation, you know, to make it work with like the accent colors, uh, with dark mode, and so on, right? Um, so whenever you use the Chin admin theme, please update to the latest um, RC and test this uh, new navigation. Would really like to get feedback on. And if you're uh, on Claro, as um, you know, Christina mentioned, you can just install the Drupal slash navigation module because there's like a dedicated module where you can use it with Claro as well. But in Chain, we have directly integrated it, so you don't. There's no need for an extra module. All right, um, let's talk about some of the layout changes. Um, you know, Christina already showed you some of the layout changes we're like you know proposing or working on. Um, so it has been a very long time, I just saw that we proposed this in 2019, that we want to do a layout redesign. So you might have to understand that when we, when we started working on Claro in the beginning, um, at least both Christine and I had a vision how Claro should look like. Um, but there were a lot of um, problems in, in doing so because we had like, you know, we had so many things on the roadmap, right? We want to make it um, perfect from the beginning, you know, like from terms of accessibility, um, in, in terms of how we structure things, you know, like the code needed to change. So basically the first iteration of Claro was we, we took seven and we just, you know, implemented the new design system we created on top of it. And then we added like all the accessibility improvements and everything on it. Um, but there was always this plan in mind that this is not the end state of Claro, right? Because we want to do more. So we proposed this meta, like the layout redesign, and it had some designs on it. Um, and basically also this might look very familiar to Chin users um, because we want to bring back like, you know, like the best bits of, of Chin, but maybe in just a a bit more refined version than what we have today, right? Because you can always think of the Chin admin theme of being like, you know, an experimental theme, not in terms of that it's unstable, but we want to try out things, right? We want to gather feedback, we want to iterate on things. So, you know, getting it out there as quickly as possible. As for core, on the other hand, we want to have a rock solid solution, right? Because it's in core, um, so we need to have like uh, to meet like all the the gates we're we're aiming for. Um, so here in the screenshot, you can see um, we have like um, you know like a very similar layout to Chin. Um, we also have like this top bar which Christina uh, before mentioned, uh, where we have like where we have a place where we let me go to the next slide, where we actually have a place for modules or at least in our vision. Uh, and this is still, you know, like a proposal we're working on, uh, so it's a draft. But we have like this place where modules can opt in to place items, you know. So you might have your, let's say, um, you're on the content edit page, right? And you have a module which maybe is only 
um, hooking into the node edit form, right? You have like a, um, you know, there are like preview modules where you can preview like a node in a mobile overlay or on a, on a tablet view. And these things are maybe only for the, the node edit form, right? So we want to have to provide like a place where we can, you know, like provide modules a way to hook into things. Um, another example would be, you know, like the environment uh, indicator module, for example, you know, could perfectly hook into that or any other uh, module you can think of, like Dabble or other modules, right? Um, and speaking of like changes we want to do is like, um, you know, like local tasks, um, vertical tabs, these are all like navigation elements, right? It's a different way to navigate through the admin UI. And we also want to do some changes there. You know, we, uh, Christina mentioned it, we want to move some stuff uh, maybe out, you know, like making the layout a bit more dense when we can remove some things which might not be necessary anymore in, in, a, in a future UI. Um, so I'm talking about these things, you know, we have like local tasks and then we have, you know, like other local tasks which are like a second level, uh, which, mm, you know, might not be the best thing to have like tabs in tabs. Right, uh, and then we have local actions, uh, which are just at the top of the page. But then, when you're actually building content, you know, if let, let's say you're um, in the manage phase, you know, you're adding fields, and then the save button is just at the bottom of the page, so it's not easily reachable, right? Um, especially if you're a content editor, for example, uh, you know, on on the node edit form, you want to just do a tiny small change on your site you have to scroll down all the way to the button to save it, right? So in Chain, we solved that in having like this sticky bar at the top. So, you know, like the local actions are always visible and, and you know, you have like actionable items. So that's something we're looking into as well. Um, yeah, so here you can see the example of the managed display, right? Where you can, Basically, you can like add something or you can, you know, the save button is not visible because it's somewhere at the bottom. So all those things uh, we can maybe improve and provide like a better way how we can outline them. So I think another great part of the Tinabian theme is the customization layer. And this is not that uh, we invented that um, because it was actually like, a, um, you know, I had a lot of discussions or we had a lot of discussions that we want to do that with Claro in the beginning. And this actually was like the beginning of the Chin Admin theme as such because like the version 1X was basically Claro just with like accent color. So you could, you know, it was just like a form where you could choose the accent color and that's it. The rest was Claro, right? And then, yeah, eventually it evolved a bit into its own thing because, you know, we had like, the first thing was the accent color. We, we had, you know, uh, you might be familiar with this. So you have like um, different colors to choose from as a starting point. And then you can also set your own color, you know, if you're fancy, uh, you know, to make the admin UI experience more tailored to your uh, DXP or to your client or to your agency, you name it, right? So some examples, um, you know, this is the Chin admin theme, but, uh, you know, here we have like some different colors and, you know, it's something very easily, right? Uh, we had some hurdles that we cannot proceed with this with core. Uh, one was that we don't uh, expose, for example, CSS free variables because, you know, like this opens the door to make this way easier <laughs> than ever before, right? Uh, and we're actually also using this technique in Chin, uh, by the way. Um, but it's not the only one out there, right? Because like, you know, Olivero, um, looking at you, Mike, um, has also something very similar, right? Because Olivero already shipped with like having like, you know, like the ability to change the accent color, right? So the foundation is in core already, um, but there are some things we need to do and it's being worked on. Uh, so, you know, like there's like a proposal to add like a theme colors YAML file, so you could, you know, easily define your custom colors and then, you know, your theme can pick it up or like work with it. So providing like a solid base, how we can do that. So you, you can potentially also use this technique in your own front end themes or in your distributions or whatever you're building, right? Um, so yeah, that's something else which is still in progress, but um, you know, we're close in finishing that. Um, 
And then there are other changes, right? I think Jin is famous for having like this dark mode. And this was also something we want to bring to core at some point, right? It was always part of at least the roadmap. Um, but yeah, we didn't get to it just of yet, but you know, so you can enable like a dark mode and then, you know, you can use it. I think the key part about customization is that we also being able to expose them on the user level. Um, because, you know, I think like having an accent color, having like enabling dark mode and stuff like that needs to be tailored um, to the user. So there's another issue about that. Do you want to step in? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there's even more, right? I mean, there are several issues about this, and I think we we um, you know we heard you as users uh, of the admin UI when we rolled out like Claro, uh, you know, there was a lot of feedback that it doesn't feel as dense as the seven theme before, for example, right? Um, because of all the accessibility changes we made, everything grew a bit, you know, uh, hit, you know, like bigger tar target points for buttons, for example, stuff like that. And why not providing like a, you know, a, a user facing setting where you can actually change the layout density? Right, something we already have in Chin, um, because we we wanted to try this out, right? And again, with CSS free variables, you can easily implement something like that. So, for example, you have like here the content list, and then when you enable, you know, a more compact mode, you know, the strings. This is not the most compact, but you can change it. And now, if you do a comparison with Seven, you can actually see that we fit even more content in than Seven did before. So. I think the argument of not being dense is a bit relate, uh, unrelated at this point. Um, but it's something we want to push for core, right? Um, because it currently solely lives in Chin, and we need to make that happen. So this was the issue I talked about, about the spacing in Claro. You know, it pushes a lot of the content down. I think another great improvement we did to counter this was we, we changed like the bulk actions. You know, they were always duplicated at the top and at the bottom of the page, and we consider, uh, you know, we, we combined them into one contextual thing. So if you're on newer Drupal versions, like 10.1 onwards, uh, if you select like multiple items in the content list, for example, or the media library, you know, like this um, contextual navigation pops up where you can have like local tasks to easily modify multiple ones, you know, like bulk edit or modify or delete stuff. So there are a lot of ways how we can improve that, right? I always have the f feeling you want to step in and say something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the pressure. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, field UI, right? Um, you know, Laurie talked about this earlier. Uh, this week, you know, this this is a great enhancement, um, right? It's also part of the admin UI because it's part of the, uh, you know, of the user experience. And in you know, like creating this new, better way in in creating content, uh, you know, being faster, being able to see like context information on field reuse, for example, you know, creating groups, you know, creating groups was there before, but we. You know, everybody or almost everybody use it, so why not bring it to core, right? Uh, or having like more contextual information on something, you know, like providing maybe a more visual um, ap appearance to select the fields, to make it easier for, you know, like site builders um, to, to actually choose what they, what they try to, to do, right? Um, and then there's Layout Builder. You know, it's a very powerful tool, um, but sometimes you need to enable like a dozen of modules to enhance it because the, the out-of-the-box experience might not be the greatest. Um, let's put it that way. You know, I don't want to be too harsh, but you need to have like a lot of companion modules to make it work for your specific use case, most likely, right? Um, so there's a meta issue, something um, we, we, which was added like quite recently to to you know like improve like the editorial experience as a whole, um, and 
why is this necessary? I mean, we, we could see that in, you know, like the Pittsburgh initiative, um, because, you know, the stuff which got founded there was related to layer builder or even to, you know, like other principles, which is totally fine. You know, like Gutenberg, um, uh, you know, like um, paragraphs, layout paragraphs. You know, there are a lot of great tools out there um, and, you know, you can have like multiple ways to build it. But the goal here is to improve the out-of-the-box experience we have with Drupal, you know, because it's, it's the feedback we always get is that, you know, the out of the, you know, if you're like a newcomer to Drupal, it might be overwhelming because you install Drupal and then it doesn't a lot out of the box. And you don't know that you need to install admin toolbar and, you know, a bunch of modules. And then you're like, why is it that way, right? We know that if you're long in, in, in the community and worked with Drupal. It's an easy thing to, to add all those modules as a for, in a first glance, right? So we want to try to improve like the out of the box experience. Speaking of improving the out-of-the-box experience, and there's also a dashboard. Um, you know, you might be familiar with this. You know, this is like back in the Drupal 7 um, space. Uh, we had a dashboard, and we want to make a return for the dashboard. But uh, this time, not a one-size-fits-all solution, but more a tailored experience for, you know, like a more customized experience to these different personas Christina showed you earlier on, right? Because they all have different needs, and we want to in incorporate that. You know, I presented like this mock-up, and I was not a mo much uh, thought about that like two or three years ago at the DrupalCon. Um, and then, you know, we were like in talks if we actually should make an initiative out of it to bring it back to Drupal, but more on a, on a personalized experience level, right? Because I think, again, Christina said, most users land on the user page, and there's nothing on it. You know, you're just lost there, and then you navigate away from it. So um, it might be like a nice improvement to have like a, you know, a quick glance of what's going on in your site. You know, you see maybe security updates, you see unpublished content, you see stuff you need to review as a content editor, uh, translations, you know, all those things can be in a single hub. All right. Um, yeah, I think we can skip that. I already talked about, you know, that, that we need to take that into consideration of the different personas we have and the different needs they have. You know, the, some might need to have like shortcuts. It also needs to be a, a customized experience. And then we can throw in uh, maybe layout builder so you're able to actually fully control, have full control over that new dashboard and, you know, like adding your own blocks for maybe your modules or, you know, your just your, your user experience you want to build for your use case. Want to add something here? Yeah, we're also trying to talk. We, so our, in our plans, we want to talk also with distributions and to see, like, to be able, uh, not just distribution, so, but also like big modules that have been, can provide really interesting things in here, like, for example, Google Tag Manager or things like that. Yeah. And then for the, for the proposed implementation as of now, you know, we would have like maybe two default dashboards tailored to those personas or like, uh, you know, to the, to the user roles basically. Um, but then, as I mentioned, you, you could enable maybe layout builder and then you have like the, f the, f the full fledged experience where you can customize it uh, tailored to your needs. All right. Um, so. There's actually a lot going on in this space. Um, there's also like a Slack channel called Dashboard. Um, uh, Christian actually worked on this uh, GitHub project where he already, um, you know, like implemented a lot of those things I talked about. So you can, you know, check that out at this link. And you, you're also welcome to join the Slack channel because there's a lot um, happening currently in there. Uh, I'll talk about more of different Slack channels later on. All right. Uh, we don't have time, we skip that. Um, well, I will mention that in the initiative keynote after the lunch break. So we skip it for now. Uh, and then I will talk about that later on. All right, uh, the important part, because we need more people. I think everybody who stands there or here where I am says that, but we actually need more people. We need more designers, front-enders, back-enders. We need researchers, we need all kind of, you know, you name it. We need just more people working on all those initiatives, right, basically. 
um, so there's a plan issue where like a lot of the things we talked about today are like you know like outlined as a plan and it's a good starting point to look into this to see what's going on um, another good thing might be to you know join one of the slack channels we have um, so you can go to drupal org slash join slack if you're not in in the Drupal in the official drupal slack channel and then we have topic based slack channels like admin ui field ux you know a preview dashboard and, and so on um, and most of them have like weekly meetings or bi-weekly meetings um, most of the time it's in text form so you can you know easily join there, reach out there if you have questions or you know, if you have skills and want to bring you in. And the most important part, we have a birth of a feather, room 201, 2.1 uh, at 4.15 later this afternoon where we discuss like, you know, what we're going to do with the navigation. And then right after that, we have another session about the Chin Admin theme, um, you know, where we can discuss things for the Chin Admin theme. And we might need some more time for the administration, so there might be some overlay. And wait, and there is, right after this, there is Laurie's session about the page building uh, thing. Yes, which is in a couple of minutes. So no, with that said. 10. Is it? 10, it's at half past 10, half, All right. half past 11. Yeah. Couple of minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, all right, well, that's it for this session today. Uh, I want to thank Christina. I um, want to thank everybody which is here. If you have any questions, let us know. Thank you.